Hello, my name is Patricia Gregory. I am a registered dietitian working with Dr. Sarah Glover in the gastroenterology clinic at UF Health Shands. New research is being done in the area of diet for patients with inflammatory bowel disease. In the past, most GI specialists did not include diet as part of the treatment for Crohn's and colitis. But the many patients who have found some relief from their symptoms through diet have been the catalyst for the medical community's research in this area. We're finding that clearly what we eat changes the balance of microbes in our gut, which influences both our physical and mental health. The specific carbohydrate diet, SCD, was one of the first diets that many patients found effective. Let me introduce you to two patients who have been following this diet. Linda wanted to avoid relying only on medicine. She has been able to manage her symptoms on diet alone for three years. Though this has not been easy and she has experienced flares, she feels good about having done this and has some tips to share. As Patricia said, I've been dealing with colitis for some time now, actually three years, and I have microscopic colitis, which is a little different from some of the others. And uh, over the years, I've been able to find some things that have worked for me and have kept me in a state of remission for most of the time. One of the uh, things that I do is I buy in quantity. Instead of going to the, one of the local supermarkets and buying a pound of almond flour, uh, I have a source in Washington State that I get a five pound bag. Uh, and she sends it to me, uh, or sometimes I buy 10 pounds, and so I always have the flour at the house for any of my baking goods. Another thing that I do is that I set aside cooking days, uh, and it may be right now every weekend because I work during the week, and during those days I go out and I have bought a large amount of vegetables or meats, and I spend my time just cooking those meats and vegetables ahead of time. That way I always have them at the house whenever I need them for a meal. I also do my baking in quantity uh, on those cooking days. And then after I have cooked my food, what I do is I, I portion it for a, a particular meal. So I may have a cup of butternut squash or some acorn squash or four ounces of some type of meat. I have a meat saver and I package everything up in the meat saver and I put it in the freezer. That way when it's time to eat, all I have to do is pull out two or three bags of food and I have my meal right there all ready for me. I know that it's fresh, I know that there's no preservatives in it, and I know that it's going to go with the diet that I'm on. Uh, one thing that has been very helpful is that I keep a food diary and I also keep a diary of when and how I go to the bathroom. And the importance of this is it gives you an a record of what you have been eating and if you have a flare at some point in time you can go back and you can look at your food diary and say okay well this is what I had at this particular time I need to watch this the next time I eat and see if it's going to cause me any additional problems if not I know I'll know to look for something else uh, the last thing that I do is I have to stick to this diet I never go off of this diet I've been on it for almost three years I think I went off at one time for one piece of cake for my granddaughter's birthday, and the rest of the time I have stayed on it. Have I always been successful? Am I always in remission? No, I'm not. But I am in much better condition being on this diet than I was before I went on the diet. And so I feel strongly that if you don't stick to it day by day, you can't do this five days a week and then on weekends go out and splurge and have whatever you want, because it's not worth it in the end. Next, I want you to meet Priscilla. She is a world traveler. She's lived in China, visited Germany, spent time in Florida, and currently lives in El Salvador. And these are Priscilla's travels in the last few months. She will provide us with some of the ways she has been able to maintain her diet in spite of moving around the globe. Thank you, Patricia. I'm happy to tell you what works with the SCD diet and my travels. I usually take Lara bars with me. The coconut and the banana breads are the allowed on the SCD diets. I call ahead to the hotels to make sure that they have a fridge and, if possible, a microwave. Um, when I go out to restaurants, I ask the waiters to cook the chicken or fish with no additives, no spices, and I just add lemon and salt when it gets to the table. And if it's 
iffy of the restaurant I'll be going. I just eat before I go and I just enjoy the company. When my trips are more than three days, I take my yogurt maker with me. I found a light one that weighs two pounds and it fits in my carry-on. And then once I'm at the hotel, my first stop is at the, re at the supermarket so I can stock up on uh, fresh fruits and eggs so can, I can carry hard boiled eggs with me and just any other thing that I find that's in the SED permitted list. Fruits and honey are examples of simple carbohydrate foods. Currently, there are studies using the specific carbohydrate diet at a number of GI clinics across the country, including those at Stanford University, Rush Medical University in Chicago, and Seattle Children's Hospital. Barbara Olinsky, registered dietitian and assistant professor, and her team in the University of Massachusetts have modified this diet and have increased the focus on balancing the microbiome, the good and bad bacteria in the gut. In a small case study, they reported on the results of 11 patients who chose to follow their diet. Working with their gastroenterologist, 100% of these patients were able to downscale their medical regimen, and 100% had the IBD symptoms reduced. What I've adopted as my mantra is that the foods that are healthy for you are those foods that your body can absorb, digest, and use for energy. And those foods are not the same for everyone. Though change is not easy, it is, as Linda and Priscilla have shown, doable. Making the considerable effort involved can be extremely rewarding by improving substantially the quality of your life. I hope you consider your food intake as part of your treatment plan. It is your gut after all. I am both a researcher and physician in gastroenterology. My major interest is inflammatory bowel diseases, including Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. There has been a surge of research in this area. Our ability to investigate the microbes lining the gut, also called the gut microbiota, has increased. This advancement is accelerated by the work of my colleagues in immunology, genomics, and pathology. These discoveries give us an appreciation of the role of these microbes in health and disease. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are characterized by intestinal inflammation or a disruption of the gut lining. Crohn's disease can affect you anywhere from your mouth to your anus. Ulcerative colitis is limited to the colon. Both diseases can have varying impacts on every patient. The goal is to treat to target to induce mucosal healing. The increase of research has given us new diagnostic tools and an explosion of available treatments. We hope to make treatment of these diseases more personalized. Clinical trials and scientific research are giving us new ways to induce disease remission and improve quality of life.